Hello and welcome to my first video on the FM3 by Fractal Audio. Yes, it is not a mystical device. It has arrived and it is here on the floor right beside me. And I will show you what it can do and maybe what it cannot do. But this is a subject for another video. Uh, I will do a special video comparing the FM3 to the Fractal Audio XFX3 because I asked in the forums and that was the, actually the most asked question. So um, excuse my English because I'm a little out of practice and I hope you will understand me anyway. Okay, let's talk about what the FM3 is and what the FM3 is not. The FM3 is an amp modeler, an effects unit, and you can load IRs in it. So, I mean, that's actually enough. It is the little brother of the highly acclaimed XFX3 by Fractal Audio. And just to give you a quick comparison, as I said, I will do another video on this, but a quick comparison, I loaded um, a, a preset, which I did on the FM3 into the XFX3, which you can do totally, it's no problem loading FM3 presets in the XFX3 and vice versa if you don't use anything that's not included in the FM3, that is. And uh, I had about 78% of processor on the FM3 and when I loaded it in, into the XFX3, I had about 44 to 45% processor usage. So I would say you can approximately say it's like 50%, maybe 51% of the power of the XFX3. So the FM3 is about half. Okay, I hope that satisfies everybody, but as I said, I will do another video on this. So let's talk about what you have um, in the area of inputs. So let's start from left to right on the back of the, X, uh, of the FM3. So you have a, just a standard instrument input, which is very high quality, like you're used to with Bifractal Audio. Then you have uh, balanced outputs, XLR connections, only XLR connections. So you have to use an adapter if you wanna um, use like uh, normal cables, like this one. Uh, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, you have a ground lift switch. If you have any hum going on, then you have um, Input 2, which is a stereo input, and you can also use this as an effects loop if you configure it that way. You have a stereo out with humbuster cable um, possibility. You don't have to use humbuster cables. You can use humbuster cables though. You have two pedal jacks, which you can either use a normal expression pedal, for example, the EV2 I have here on the floor, or you can use um, a stereo switch, so just a standard foot switch, like for example, let me show you. This one by Utter Custom Design, this one, you could just use this and put it right beside it if you want. Then what do we have? FAS link where you can use an XLR cable to connect a Fractal Audio FC6 or FC12. You have two USB ports, one USB B port and one USB A port. And if that USB A port can uh, power any MIDI controllers you want to connect, maybe will come in another video. Then you have MIDI in, out, through, and so just two jacks, not three. And you have, S you have SPDIF out. And I like it really much. You have an integrated power supply, no block. Thing lying around on the floor, just a standard uh, cable and power supply is built in and you can use it, I think it should, yeah, it's a 100 to 240 volt, so you can use it anywhere on the world if you have the right cable. Very cool. So let's switch to the front. Ah, one question that was asked very often, does it have a fan, how loud is it and where are the exhaust holes? I can answer that. It has a fan, it is dead quiet. And I have to say, I'm a, a silent freak. I'm a silent nerd. I uh, bought a Mac Pro, the new Mac Pro, just because it's silent, not because I, I need the power. <laughs> I don't need the power. I mean, the base model is uh, enough already, but it's dead silent, just like the FM3. 
And if you're used to the fans of the XFX3, they are much louder. And they're also quiet, so they, they, they don't... They're okay. I mean, I would prefer if they were a little less loud, but they're not really loud. I mean, I have a very quiet studio. Nothing is humming here. Nothing is like... I have this recording monitor I have. This is the loudest thing in the whole, uh, in the whole studio. It's a Ninja 5 and it's the loudest thing in the studio. And this one annoys me. The XFX doesn't annoy me and the FM3 is dead silent. You can hear the fan only if you put your ear right to the, ex right to the exhaust hole, which the exhaust hole is on the right side and on the left side, not at the bottom. So you have to take care if you put a foot switch beneath it or uh, an FC6 or something like this. Just take a little space so the air can go through it. There's also like uh, on the back of the XFX is a sign where it says don't cover exhaust holes. So, this is that. Then, <clears throat> let's go to the front. You have the complete user interface of the XFX3 with the same, exactly the same display. Very good display. You have those continuous knobs A, B, C, D, E, five of them. You have a big value knob which doesn't have a push function unlike the XFX3 and anything else is quite the same. Of course, you have three switches and we come to the three switches uh, at the end of the video where I will show you what you can do with just three switches, which is amazing. Okay, three, swi three switches <laughs> and you have those little displays over the switches where you can see what they will do if you press them. So that's it. Let's hear some sounds, I would say. Yes? So. Normally I would use um, presets, but um, I was in the mood to do my own sounds with my favorite amp models. Um, the FM3 has exactly the same amp models and they sound exactly the same as in the XFX3. So all of them and they sound the same. I will do a complete video comparing the FM3 to the XFX3 where I, I will reamp everything with the both devices with the same preset so you can hear for yourself that they sound exactly the same. Okay, I didn't do it yet, so I, I think you will hear they sound exactly the same. Maybe we get a surprise, but I don't think we do. They are exactly the same to, uh, to dial in, so nothing new here. And I just prepared this one preset with eight different scenes, four different amp models, some effects. And let's listen to that. Starting with a standard clean sound. Some strumming. Okay, a little variation on the same preset. I have just a chorus coming uh, to the mix, which is the dimension one here. sound with the same clean amp which is by the way the vibrato looks yeah there it is <laughs> I just added um, a distortion block here, a drive block, sorry, and uh, used the esoteric RCB, which is a simulation of the RC booster by Exotic. Which gives it a little dirt. Okay, 
next one. I switched to the uh, Morgan AC20 simulation uh, for little dirty sounds, little edge of breakup sounds. <laughs> And with this amp model, I also have a little uh, more lead sound with a little bit of delay, which is an analog mono delay, I think. <laughs> Coming to the more distorted tones, I use a Friedman HPE version 2 here as a rock rhythm sound. <laughs> Okay, here I have a little boost sound as well, where I add the RC booster to the mix and a graphic EQ to make it a little louder. <laughs> Finally, another app model, the Dietzel Channel 3 of the VH4, the silver version. Oh, I have to switch off the chorus, sorry. Okay, that was the sound demo. I hope you liked it. Uh, there will probably be coming a, a lot of videos demoing the presets, which are very good. Um, but I wanted to give you something different. And especially because I have something else planned with those eight scenes, which I will show you now. And uh, from now on, you will only see the X, uh, not the X, the FM3 on the floor, where I show you what you can do with just three switches. Okay. <clears throat> I have switch one configured to give me the clean sound when I just tap it. When I tap it next time, it will toggle to scene two, where I have the chorus. When I hold the button, it will give me the clean boost sound. So, three sounds with just one button. If I want to have a quick chorus sound, I just do pop pop and there we are. Right? Clean sound. Not no chorus, chorus. Very easy. On button 2, I have only two sounds. I have the crunch sound. And the crunch boost. The delay.
-hmm. I also have a hold function, but we'll come to that later. On button three, I have my rock rhythm sound. <laughs> If I hit it the next time, the boost sound, and if I hold the button, it sound with delay. Okay, but what happens if I press the crunch button here, the middle button, and hold it? I will switch to a different view, and now my three buttons have different functions. Button one will switch on and off a compressor. You can see it here, compressor one enabled, compressor one bypassed on the display. If I hold, I can switch the graphic EQ on and off. Here on the second one, I can switch on the chorus or switch off the chorus. Here I have tap tempo. And if I hold, I have tuner. If I hold the middle button, I will come back to my scenes. So this is what you can do with just three switches. And for me, uh, I was very surprised because I always thought three switches is not enough, like many of you probably thought. I mean, you have to remember how you configured the buttons, but if you do it in a logical way, like I did here, so my clean sounds are on button one, my crunch sounds are on button two, and my rock sounds are on button three, then it's no problem. And uh, you could also not do just two views, you could do four views, which you can step up and down. And if you add another switch, like this one, <clears throat> by other custom design, then you can use the same button functions with hold and toggle with two additional switches while still using an expression pedal. And you have five switches, so actually you have a FM5, or if you don't need an expression pedal, you can add two, so you have an FM7. And of course you can add an FC6, which will give you much more functionality. You have nine buttons, but with way more functionality than the old X, uh, AX8. So many of you are coming from the AX8 to the FM3, uh, like me. I used the AX8 for about four years live and was very satisfied. But I think I will probably do with just the FM3 and maybe one of these. But this will totally be enough for everything because you can switch the views and it's so convenient and also so convenient to program it, uh, which I will show you in a different video. But I think that's it for today. If you have questions, ask them in the comments. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. I will very much appreciate it. And I, will put, I would also appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Okay, thank you very much. This was Bernd Kiltz with the FM3 for G66 and see you next time. Bye.